What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. I bought an HTC Nexus 9 in 2019. Now, in my opinion, I think I got a pretty good deal on it. Paid $120, they're refurbished on Amazon. This is the 32 gigabyte Wi-Fi model. We're gonna go over the specs in just a second, but if you're not familiar with the Nexus 9, this was released in 2014 in conjunction with HTC, Nvidia, and Google. I've been looking around for a long time for a decent tablet at a good price that I could emulate my favorite consoles on, and I think I might have found it here. I was originally looking at the Nvidia Shield tablet, but the prices are ridiculous on eBay for used ones or even ones with broken screens, so I went a step backwards with the Nexus 9. For the CPU, we have the Nvidia Tegra K1 Dual Core at 2.3 GHz. You can overclock these with a custom kernel to 2.5. The GPU is the K1, it's a 192 core Kelper GPU, 2 GB of LPDDR3 1600 MHz RAM, 16 or 32 GB of storage, no SD card, but you can use an OTG adapter. So if you do end up buying one of these, I would recommend go with the 32 GB model, you're going to want that extra storage. For the operating system, the last OS that HTC and Google released was 7.11, but there are custom ROMs up to Oreo, and I think there are some Pi ones floating around somewhere. The screen is 8.9 inches, it's 1536 by 2048. It actually has a decent Wi-Fi chip built in, it's 802.11abgnac, so you can get that 5 GHz network. So this isn't going to beat a top tier phone. It doesn't even benchmark higher than the Galaxy 8, but... I only spent $120 on it. I was looking into buying a used Galaxy 8 or something like that, but they're still going for $300. I personally use an iPhone in my everyday life for work, so I don't have the luxury of having the newest Android phone on the market. And when I'm out and about and I want to play some retro games, I can now use the Nexus 9 to do so. I did run a couple benchmarks like Antutu and 3D Mark. For Antutu, we scored a 110,000, and the GPU score is pretty decent here. Coming in at 51,000 on the GPU, for comparison, the Galaxy S8 does 75,000 on the GPU end. Next up, I did run a 3D Mark Slingshot. I scored a 2,129. It's saying that I beat 100% of the other Nexus 9s that were benchmarked and 72% of all other devices. Now, I guess this is tablet devices because when I do go to the comparison chart in 3D Mark, all I see are tablets here. But those are benchmarks. I want to get into some real-world performance. First up, I'm going to test a couple native Android games. This is Asphalt 9 here. Screen looks amazing, and the game runs great. Next up, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. In the settings, I have the resolution set to 80%, the draw distance at 80, visual effects at high. It looks great and it plays fine on this tablet. So if you wanna run any other Rockstar games like Bully or the older Grand Theft Autos, they're gonna run fine on this device. Fortnite is not compatible with the Nexus 9, so I cannot test it, but PUBG is. I do not personally play this game, but I know a lot of people do, so I figured I'd test it in this video. I got somebody who was shooting at me. I'm going to try to snipe him with a machete. So I'll get out into the open here. I do notice some stutters every once in a while when new stuff is loading in the background. But overall, I mean, it's a playable experience. As much as it can be on an Android device. I just don't think that PUBG was very well optimized for Android yet. So you'll be able to play a ton of native Android games on this device. What about emulation? This is PP SSPP running God of War Chains of Olympus. Everything's on low. It's not going to cut it with this game. We can turn frame skip on. I'm going to set it to 2. 
you can now play the game. This is just one of those games that gives the PP SSPP emulator a run for its money, just like Killzone Liberation and Midnight Club. So those three games aren't going to be running on here, but there are a ton of PSP games that will. Here's Burnout at 2x resolution. I think we might even be able to go up to 3, but I'm going to leave it here. I think it looks good. It's playing fine. And by the way, I'm using an Xbox One S Bluetooth controller connected to the Nexus 9 to play these games. And finally, for PSP, we have Tekken Dark Resurrection. This is at 2x resolution, and we're getting a nice steady 60 FPS out of it. I've tested this emulator on a lot of devices. I can tell you right now that there are a ton of PSP games that are going to run at full speed here. From 2x to 4x resolution, just depending on the game. One of the main reasons I picked up the Nexus 9 was for on-the-go N64 emulation. This is 007, I'm using MooPin 64 FZ Plus from the Google Play Store, and it's about as good as it gets on Android. Now if you mess around with any of the N64 emulators, you know that they're a mess, and some devices run them better than others, but this looks really good, and it's decent performance. Another hard to emulate N64 game, Conker's Bad Fur Day. Now you won't see any Mario here, it's going to run Mario, it's going to run Zelda, it's going to run all of the mainstream N64 games fine. These are harder games to emulate and that's why I wanted to test them in this video. Conker's is running great. And finally, for the N64 section, Killer Instinct Gold. I gotta say, the Nexus 9 is one of the best portable devices that I've ever emulated N64 on. A lot of these games are running really good. Unfortunately, I couldn't get Rogue Squadron up and running for some odd reason. It was working the other day on the Shield, but it won't work on the Nexus 9.
And finally, the last game I'm going to test, in this video at least, is Bloody Roar 2 on PS1 using RetroWatch. Now I'm using the PC SX Rearm Core. Runs it fine. So overall, I understand that the Nexus 9 is an old tablet, but for what I need it for, emulation, and some native Android games, I won't play a lot of them, I think was well worth the $120 I spent on it. Now, this is a refurbished 32GB white version. They do have some available. I'll leave a link in the description. The only thing it's missing are physical buttons, so I went ahead and ordered the IPEGA 9083. This is an extendable or a telescopic controller. Hopefully it fits. I don't want to get anybody's hopes up until I get one in my possession and test it out. I do want to make another video on the Nexus 9. I want to test out some Dreamcast, some Dolphin. I don't think Dolphin's going to run well on it. I'll even do some PS2. But first, I want to install a custom kernel on here. I'm going to mess with it for a couple days. I'll have a video back up on the channel very shortly. I do want to overclock the CPU and GPU with this custom kernel and see what we can get out of it. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and like always, thanks for watching.